I just want to give you a little bit of a corporate presentation why you don't know about Cyrotex and why you actually should know about Cyrotex. And uh, the whole reason about Cyrotex is that it's a company that only works in the OEM frame and we've made very little waves uh, with regards to exactly what we do and how we do things. Um, we have two divisions. One is called the NSS, which is the Network Storage Group, and the other one is called Storage Infrastructure. Now, the last part of those, the storage infrastructure, is a really weird one. That's something we only sell to other storage vendors. But that's what everybody pretty much uses to test their hard drives. Uh, we do have some numbers. Um, so if you look at the SI uh, group with the testing of hard drives, etc., we actually have more than 75% of every hard drive that manufactures is tested using Cyrotex equipment. So if your hard drives doesn't work, it probably means it's from those 25% that wasn't tested by our equipment. <laughs> kind of marketing thing. There. But the interesting thing about the other group, the NSS, uh, the NSS Network Storage Group, is that we do ship a lot of disks. So last year we shipped uh, over three exabyte of disk space totally. We shipped 139,000 storage enclosures, which makes us the biggest OEM storage uh, supplier uh, on the market. Um, uh, we've been um, uh, acknowledged by IDC a couple of times as, as the uh, premier uh, vendor in this area. So we do have a lot of experience. Now, this is not a new company. This used to be the IBM storage company back in the 60s and 70s uh, that then got bought out by the management or a management buyout in the 90s. So that this is actually a company with a lot of experience. So the next question is, why are we here? If we don't sell to any end customers, why are we here? Well, first of all, we have a big organization. So almost 2,000 people all over the world, but this is actually a British company. The head, of, head office is in Havant in southern England, just next to um, Southampton, uh, but we do have development and manufacturing all over the world. Um, this is a list of our customers. So we do have a little bit of bragging rights too. Some of these customers actually don't buy much from us anymore, so I don't want Bjorn over there to start saying, well, that's past tense. Uh, but yeah, but still, we have worked with these customers and we are still working uh, a lot with them. Um, now, one of the things we decided a couple of years ago, or Cyrotex decided a couple of years, because honestly, I've been with the company for a month, so I'm kind of new in the game here, uh, which kind of gives me some freedom to actually mess up and do some other things, which is good. But one of the things that the company decided was we need to grow specifically in the file system area. So one of the things we actually did was we looked at Lustra and kind of thought that that is the best file system out there. Uh, and our colleagues from Panas may excuse us there, but we still believe that open source and all that is, is really important. Uh, this is a stupid slide that shouldn't be there. But what we did was we bought Cluster Store. Now, Cluster Store is the company that Peter Brom, the original author of Lustre, built um, after he left Sun. And he did that for a primary reason because he wanted to research what the next file system would be out there. But that next file system obviously have a lot of similarities where Lustre is and where Lustre will be in the next future. So he assembled a team of his former colleagues. And even though it may not have been totally obvious, specifically from some of the um, marketing message you got from WhamCloud, we actually have as many, if not more, seasoned Lustre engineers on our team than they have. Um, but not only that, we combine that with the entire software team from Cyrotex that does drivers, RAID, and etc. So everything is now under the head of Peter Brom that works on where we will go with these things. That also means that if you start putting things together here a little bit, we got one of the premier storage manufacturers in the world. We got the author of Lustre in the company, and they recently hired me, so that most of you that know me from before knows I have a experience from Sun and the HPC group at Sun. You can kind of make two and two together. Now, this is where we should have this fantastic family slide of our next big project and how we're going to revolutionize the world. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to talk about that project quite yet. 
So this is kind of when you go into the web pages and look at a teaser trailer for the next movie. I will just tell you that it will be great and it will be fantastic and there will be dancing boys, flying banners and trombones, but this is only a teaser. So you'll have to wait for ISC for the big launch of that thing. One of the things I do want to share with you though is uh, our commitment to luster. And one of the things that was discussed earlier was that one of the things that luster lacks today is decent bonding so you can have failover and or load share. So one of the things we did was we took an idea that's been floating around for a while to do channel bonding. Uh, but we want to do it in a fashion where it actually works. The channel bonding that's on the official roadmap that Sun used to have and that Oracle kind of messed up um, points to the fact that we want to do channel bonding between any and all interfaces. So channel bonding between InfiniBand and Gigabit Ethernet may sound like a good idea, but it's actually fairly stupid. So we decided we only want to do it at the LNet. Now, if you remember the training that Andreas gave you, LNet is kind of underneath the normal driver level and handles all the lust of traffic. So, um, we actually moved it a little bit lower down in the stack. Now, the advantage of that is that we do not have to participate in any of the standard drivers or any of the IP problems that usually affect these kind of solutions. So we can actually do it at RDMA level. That also means we can retain the full performance and the low latency, but we can still get multiple lanes. I don't have a lot of really good slides on these, but the whole idea with doing these things, and it's actually not quite shipping yet, but it is to be able to take the two ports I have on a single HCA, or if I have two HCAs in a system, I can actually bond the different interfaces into a single virtual interface in the system. So it still looks like a single interface being used, but it can use both um, both ports or both cards uh, to aggregate bandwidth and to provide a certain level of failover. It won't be failover in traditional means, but if one link fails, the other will continue and you just half your performance. Now, one of the biggest problems here has always been how do we actually manage that in a decent fashion? And that's exactly what we've added into the stack. It's probably going to be fully announced at the last user groups in two weeks. Uh, and at ISC, we'll probably be showing it off live in the um, in our booth and, and exactly how well that can work. So, just to end up some of the other things, uh, it's been a lot of talk about what's been done uh, to the new community release 2.1 from Lustre. We actually have added a lot of those patches to it, which is, these are part of the things. Most of these are small fixes to the patches, but very important if you build a community solution. And all of these are going into the official release of 2.1 when it comes out. Whether the channel bonding will make it to 2.1, we actually don't know quite yet, but we are working on trying to get that done. So when WAM clan says they are the biggest and the best from a Lustre point of view, I just want to say, you know, don't forget us because we're still out here and we still do a lot of good things. And you'll probably see a lot more of us around uh, ISC and Hamburg. So I hope to see most of you there in our booth. And I actually want to uh, thank uh, our colleagues from Mellanox for actually buying up Voltaire because that opened up the booth space so we could actually get a decent booth instead of stuck in a corner. <laughs> so we're really happy about that. And that was pretty much everything I wanted to say in this case. And thank you very much. Of course. Thank you, Torben, and uh, safe travels. But before you go, did anyone have any questions? You are free. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, I was debating on having the break uh, afterwards, and then Sharon nudged me and said, man, I need coffee. <laughs> All right, let's go have coffee. So um, let's be back at uh, 3.35, and then we'll continue on with the presentations. Thank you.